The Warriors are cooked. The dub sweeping the back-to-back -back against the Rockets and Pelicans is making writers off of their dynasty look out of line. A demolition in the Big Easy with Clay and Kaminga resting saw all 13 active Warriors subbed in by Steve Kerr. We'll break down the substitutions against both Houston and New Orleans, Trace Jackson Davis's first double-digit scoring performance as a pro, the undervalued longevity and sacrifice from Chris Paul, a typical masterclass from Steph Curry, and reveal the Warriors' blessing in disguise. But just 11.5% of you watching at this very moment are subscribed. If you're not in that percentage, trust me, you're going to want to subscribe for the dope content on the way. Thank you for any bit of support. In Houston, based on the smaller matchups the Rockets have down low in comparison to Sacramento, who the Warriors faced a game before, they were able to put Sarge at the backup five without having to play the roster's one true center outside of Looney in rookie Jackson Davis a single minute. In New Orleans, with Kaminga and Clay resting on the second night of a back-to-back, -back, the early non-Steph minutes saw a backup unit of Paul, Pojemski, Peyton, Sarge, and Jackson Davis keep things afloat to open the second queue. Before Trace was replaced for Looney, Saric was replaced for Wiggins, Moody for Peyton, Curry for Paul, and Draymond for Pojemski. A turnover off the inbound forced a Kerr timeout, where he subbed out Wiggins and Moody for Peyton the second and Paul, before ending the quarter by getting Looney some rest with some more Saric at the five spot. With their legs fresh, the starters would extend the lead to double digits in the early second half and would dominate from there. I thought it was a nice mix of Saric and Jackson Davis in terms of the backup five substitutions from Kerr in both Houston and New Orleans, making them well-coached games, which when it comes down to winning at any level in basketball, you obviously need to have. For Jackson Davis in particular, he fumbled a few passes to open up which pissed off Curry, but you get a sense for Trace's incredible talent when he seamlessly rises up for throwdowns on the roll and is also able to get back on defense in the blink of an eye with his elite speed for a big man. In terms of the franchise player and Curry, those like Pell's coach Willie Green saying this jab step of his was an offensive foul are very wrong. It's not Curry's fault Jordan Hawkins was in the way of a legal move. Reggie Jackson did the same thing to LeBron on opening night, and it rightfully wasn't an offensive foul either. But momentum shifted after that play, as for New Orleans, top to bottom from coaching staff to personnel, they let the refs get in their head and allowed the pace of play in favor to be taken over by Curry and the four-time undisputed champions of the world. From a most-of-the-time first-class coaching staff to a stacked core revolving around four future Hall of Famers and young phenoms all over the place, based off the amount of weapons this team has, Gary Payton II being evidently healthy for the first time since the 21-22 championship season has been the blessing in disguise for Golden State. Many underrate the fact that the son of an all-time defender in Gary Payton has made an all-defensive team and been a primary rotation piece with elite spot-up shooting and passing for a title-winning roster. The young glove Gary Payton II's vibe-enhancing energy level shows up in his definitive glue guy focus, hustle, camaraderie, communication, and attention to detail. The Warriors need Gary to win, which says a lot about him. So here's hoping Payton the young glove stays healthy both mentally and physically. It was good to see Corey Joseph, Lester Quinones, and Jerome Robinson get some garbage time run with the game out of reach, plus for the main core to rest up after two hard-fought battles. Given I mentioned Curry's longevity in my last video, it was disrespectful for me to not have talked about the ongoing impressiveness of a player that's been in the NBA since the year 2005. Chris Paul still going strong into his 19th career campaign isn't respected like it should be. Instead, too many people hate on CP3 for not having won a ring. Knowing he's in the best position to finally achieve the ultimate glory in the Bay, Chris taking a step back to become a bench player for the first time after 1,216 games of being in the starting lineup with the return of Draymond Green against Houston speaks to Paul's riveting humbleness. It, it's, uh, it's massive. It's massive the way Chris has embraced everything here in the first month. As you know, tonight was the first game of his entire career he didn't start. You know, when I talked to him this morning about it, he just, yep, like nodded his head and said, let's go get him. And not even a big deal. It's similar to, to Andre all those years ago, I guess 2014, when a vet, a great player, all-star, shows that kind of sacrifice, it just sets a tone for the whole team. And uh, so the vibe is great on our team, and, and Chris is um, one of the main reasons for that. He's not the shot maker that Jordan Poole was in this same sixth man role, but the equilibrium provided by a 12-time All-Star and 9-time All-NBA player in Chris Paul settles everything down for the entire system to flow. And when Steve Kerr's locked in with his lineup management and timeouts like he was in the Big Easy, there's no stopping this Warrior team. 
We'll see if that can keep up for the nine-time NBA champion between his time with three organizations as a coach and player. It does help for Kerr to have the greatest three-point shooter ever. For the league leading second time already, not even five games in, Steph dropped 40-plus, and Kerr opened up by using him off the ball again, as this patented split action with Draymond as the disher on the back down has Moses set the flare and Steph spring out of his off-ball jab step in the other direction of it to get the open lane where Green hooks him up. Here Steve runs an action with Curry as the screener where he sets a flare followed by a slight on-ball for Wiggins, then Wiggins sets the flare for Curry off a loony swing. Again, Wiggins whips it to a big before setting a flare for Steph, whose pump fake gets Herb Jones out of position. The dubs run a set where Curry's there for a cross on Moody's man, directly into Steph using a Moody and Saric floppy screen to receive the CP swing, then he takes care of Matt Ryan in an iso. MJ cross followed up by two space creating hezzies and a tween right catch Dyson Daniels reaching before this pull up from 30. Same signature size up where consecutive picks see him deny the second one from Draymond to get Daniels on his back, allow him to finesse finish between the trail of Dyson and the low man contest of Nance Jr. High triangle action with Moody and Paul gets Steph the switch from Daniels onto Ryan, who's hit with the signature size up and ridiculous hezzy directly into momentum cross combo followed by an equally insane finish. Don't forget about that underrated finishing, as this curry slide allows him to fly past Daniels in an iso to get downhill. Stop on a dime behind the back in semi-transition sees him fly past Dyson. Execution of this Warriors go-to floppy action gets him a wide open mid-ranger. DHO from CP and double screen from Chris and Dre give him room with his range to let it fly off the catch. On-ball stagger action as Green and Paul set consecutive picks, still force Steph to get all the way to the corner and go up against three individual Pelican defenders on one possession, yet still have the skill level, stamina, and awareness to moving jab to shed Zion and be unfazed by the closeout of Herb, nasty. In your opinion though, are the dubs capable of proving the doubters like Charles Barkley wrong? Let me know for a chance in next video shout out and to compete in Community Speaks. Today's shout out goes to FYI Sin, who says, I do think that TJD is the backup 5, but the big man minutes are going to be Draymond, Looney, Saric, and sometimes Kaminga for small ball lineups. However, I do think TJD will get a lot of opportunities during the regular season, and I just hope he can catch some lobs and defend some bigs. We don't have that energetic center outside of TJD, so I'm really high on him to make some contributions. Great take right there. Appreciate every answer from the best Hoops Talk community on YouTube down below. D-Flow, signing off.